Hi, this is 14.5. We got gradients and directional vectors in space. Now we're just extending to another dimension. So it's not too bad, but there are some examples in the book that I think that you should go look at and read through that if you get a chance to figure out um, some of the things that they're doing with level surfaces. Here I'm going to give you the nuts and bolts. We're going to go ahead and find the gradient and then directional derivatives in space, and then we're going to be able to write the equation of a tangent plane to a level surface. Similar to what we had before, the gradient is going to be in the direction of the greatest rate of increase on F, and then the gradient is also perpendicular to the level surface. And then the last is that the magnitude is a maximum rate of increase of F at ABC. How do we calculate this gradient? And it's the same exact thing that we did before. So we need the partials, and then we need the other vectors. And so we just multiply all those up, and then that will give us our gradient. Then directional derivative will be in the direction of vector u, and so it's my partial, and then I'm going to be multiplying by the x component, or the first uh, component of my u vector, and then y times the second component, and then the partial with respect to z times the third component, which is just the dot product again. Okay, so that's the dot product of the gradient dotted with u. Remember, u, though, has to be a unit vector. That's very important for us. Okay, so u is a unit vector. So example number one, find the directional derivative of this function at the point 1, negative 1, 2 in the direction of the vector 2i plus 3k. I don't write the vectors over i and k, but I should. So what we do first of all is we find the partials. So go ahead and find the partials with respect to x, with respect to y, and with respect to z. So my partial with respect to x is 2xy, and then for Partial with respect to y is x squared, and then my partial with respect to z is 1. So let's go ahead and write the gradient. So the gradient of f is going to be 2xy i plus x squared j plus k. So now if we evaluate it at the point, 1, negative 1, 2, our gradient. So we want to take this gradient now, and we want to dot it with a unit vector, which is based upon this vector v right here. So now putting these two together will get me my directional derivative in that direction. So one step in this unit, we're going to find the gradient, and then the next one now we want to find the directional derivative, which, which will just be taking the gradient f and dotting it with my u. So putting all the pieces, I got the blues from here and then the reds from here, I'm just going to get negative 4 over the square root of 13 and then 3 over the square root of 13. So I'm going to be left with negative 1 over the square root of 13. So that would be my directional derivative for this function in, at this point in the direction of this vector. Okay. And for laughs, let's find the magnitude of that gradient. The magnitude I found to be square root of 6 taking each one of these pieces. And notice again that this is the biggest magnitude of any vector that's going to be coming out of this one point as far as rel related to a directional derivative. So when comparing it to this value, yes, square root of 6 is definitely better, bigger than 1 over the square root of 13. Moving on, if we want to write the tangent, uh, find a tangent plane to a level surface, now what we can do is look at the gradient vector because it's perpendicular to the level surface, so the gradient can be a normal for us on, uh, to the level curve at a point. This helps us write the tangent plane to a curve. And here is the tangent plane. This is how we can set it up. And so we have some function, and it's differentiable at ABC, then an equation for the tangent line to the level surface is just our old familiar one that we had before. Now, if we find the normal, then we're in business. Well, the normal comes, again, from the gradient. So let's go through this example. We want to find the normal to the surface and the tangent plane to this function here, or it might not be a function, it is a function, but for this curve right here, 
at this point. So I do have this picture here. I don't know if it shows up on your black and white notes, but here is my point. I go, so this point right here is at negative one on the X, two on the Y, and one on the Z. So that's that point. And if you can see this light blue right here, the light blue would be the tangent plane that we do end up with in the end. I found the answer and graphed it just to show you what the picture looks like. So let's go ahead and find the gradient because the gradient will give us the normal. So we have to find all of our partials. Go ahead and do that. So here's all my partials. That was pretty easy. Now I want to evaluate them at the point negative 1, 2, 1. I'm not going to write out formal notations. Just plug this in. So this would be a negative 2. This one would be a 4. And this one would be a negative 2. So then my gradient is going to be equal to negative 2 i plus 4j minus 2k with all my little arrows. So when we find this gradient, that is the same thing as what a normal would be for us. And so we can just call our normal the same exact thing. Now the normal could be any multiple of this one particular vector, any non-zero multiple. And that will be perpendicular to our plane that we're going to be drawing for the tangent. Now, what does this look like? So this is the normal. So if we go to our point that we're looking at on this uh, curve, we want to find out where this normal points. Well, I know it's going to go to the back a little bit. And notice that we're kind of on this upper side of this hourglass shape. And so it's going to be pointing down a little bit. And so that's my minus 2k, and it's going to be pointing towards the y direction a little bit more. So we're going to come out this way. I don't know if that's going to work for us at, at all, but that's kind of what our vector looks like that's coming out of there. And I should make it a little bit longer because the magnitude of that vector is a little bit longer. That seems to work, I think. Now let's finish this up by writing the equation of the tangent plane. So all we need now is negative 2, and then we need to put in our plus 4, and then minus 2. Just put in our x, y, and z's now with a point. So here's my point here. So it's going to be x plus 1, and then y minus 2, and then z, or z, minus 1. So that would be the equation of the plane. And this is exactly what I typed in to get this light blue plane here to make sure I'm doing the problem right and also to get a nice picture of what's happening there for the tangent plane to the curve. All right? So those are the things in this unit. Check out th some of those examples that they have uh, in the book because it gives you a little bit more in depth. Look at what's going on, and then here's your gift. All right. Have a great day. Thanks for listening.